Uh, for our next talk, we're very happy to have Matteo Lotito here uh, to tell us about how to prove the weak gravity conjecture using tree level string theory. So. Great. All right. So let me start uh, as usual by thanking John and Cody for keeping this going well past the summer, yes, as you see the correction there. Uh, so this is work uh, that will be appearing hopefully very soon with, uh, with Ben Heidenreich. Uh, and uh, essentially the, the goal is to give some general and more rigorous results on, on what uh, we can say about the, the, the weak gravity conjecture in string theory or in, at least in three levels string theory, so with uh, some assumptions in string theory. So I don't think I need any motivation. In fact, I don't have it and I don't have time for that. So let me just jump to like a brief review of what the WGC states. Uh, uh, we, uh, we require, or the conjecture requires that there is a, a particle in the spectrum whose charge to mass ratio is larger than uh, the, the one for an extremal black hole. Uh, this is uh, as it was first uh, stated, and so the question is how we, can we show that these states exist? Now, an alternative formulation of the, of the WGC was already originally in, uh, sorry, in the original paper, but I, I guess it didn't uh, uh, catch as much attention, but this nowadays goes under the name of the repulsive force conjecture. And uh, this uh, relies instead of imposing constraints on long range forces between uh, the, the states in the spectrum. And uh, uh, re the, the conjecture states that there is a part of the spectrum that is self repulsive. So the overall force has to be greater than zero, greater or equal than zero. So it should be noted uh, that um, uh, in the absence of moduli, these two conjectures or these two statements essentially reduce to the same. So it's important for us that actually there are moduli. Um, so over the years, there have been uh, refinements of, uh, of the conjectures, especially I, I mentioned here the sublattice, the weak gravity conjecture, which uh, states that there is a particle in the spectrum at each uh, side on a, of a sublattice of the charge lattice uh, of the original theory that we're studying. And the same can be applied for the RFC, uh, where you replace just the uh, super extrema with self-repulsive. Uh, now, uh, as I said, it, uh, in the absence of moduli, it's, uh, these two statements reduce to the same. So it's clear that they are connected. We want to understand how. And there is uh, an argument by Ben, who is coming out very soon, I, I expect. Uh, that states that if we have a self-repulsive particle, uh, set of the repulsive state uh, in the spectrum, and this statement holds true everywhere in moduli space, then th this, uh, this object, this uh, state satisfies some bound that effectively makes it super extremal. So if the RSC is satisfied everywhere in moduli space, then that same state will satisfy the WGC. Now, um, so what's our goal? Our goal is precisely this, right? Uh, having finding a self-repulsive uh, state, and then asking if uh, we can claim that this statement holds true everywhere in moduli space. In that case, that would mean that this particle satisfies both, both conjectures. Now, uh, right, uh, what, what would be the objects of interest? Uh, th this actually is the statement of the, that gave rise to the sublattice conjecture, sublattice forms of the conjectures. Uh, it, it relies on modular invariance of the, uh, the string theory partition function uh, and states that given a state of, uh, of uh, charge Q, there is a, a, a spectrum of, uh, of related states because you can shift its charge by, um, by, uh, uh, by an amount which is uh, in, uh, in the dual of the charge lattice. Uh, so, so that's how you generate a whole sub lattice of these states. Uh, and uh, so this is, in fact, uh, what has been used also in, um, in specific examples to show that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, what, that the string theory, or at least certain examples of string theory, satisfy the WGC. And in particular, the, the states most often used, and also the ones that we will be uh, dealing with, are uh, uh, states related to the graviton by the spectral flow arguments, by, by, by modular invariant, trans modular 
transformations of the graviton state uh, uh, that generate these states, uh, uh, these charge states. So our point of view will be taking the RFC approach and see what we can say about them by in a, in a generic uh, setup and, and, and then uh, uh, find conclusions based on that. So how do we set it up? This is, the, this is just the introduction. So uh, the idea is to study uh, an effective field theory, which is just a U1 gauge theory coupled to gravity. So what we will, the objects of interest that appear are uh, the, these states, you know, the graviton gauge field, the charge states that will be our candidates, and, uh, and moduli. All right, so at tree level, uh, these are the, uh, the interaction uh, vertices that uh, we have and that we may want to compute. Now, I, I separated them different, uh, in different sets. It will be clearer later why uh, why this is, a, uh, this is relevant, but the, the key uh, uh, argument or the key, sorry, the key object that we are interested in is the bottom right term that it mediate, essentially mediates interactions between moduli and these charge states. All right. So, um, okay. So here, what, what I, I, I show the diagram. So the question is, what do we need to compute? There are a bunch of terms that uh, will be universal. So essentially, they can be computed in some examples, but we don't, we, we are not concerned with them. Uh, but our key, uh, our key uh, object is this uh, psi psi phi interaction, which does parameterize the, the scalar charge. So how moduli mediate interactions between the charge states. This, this is, remember, this is the third term that appear in the, uh, appears in the RFC conjecture. Right, so this is the, the EFT point of view, but how do we put this in a, in a string theory? Well, we, we describe it as a worksheet, imperturbative string theory as a worksheet theory. Now, uh, what I will be saying from now on will be uh, for a bosonic uh, string theory. I'll run the arguments for the bosonic case, and then we'll see how to generalize this. So the general uh, structure is that we uh, we write the worksheet theory as a factorized expression like this. Um, and there's an external part that is uh, is universal, is essentially a free theory, and the internal CFT will be uh, what we actually care about. And uh, as an example, you see the graviton uh, vertex operator is written in this form. So in terms of the internal CFT, is uh, is is just a, essentially a trivial object. And so th that makes it clear that, for instance, the Stripper function of the graviton is a universal uh, term that, again, uh, we, we don't need uh, to, to worry about. Right. So, uh, so uh, from the EFT perspective, I was saying we need to compute these um, three-point functions. And so as I, as I showed that in the example of the graviton, the vertex operators uh, how we write the states in the worksheet uh, description are is in this factorized form that will say that also the correlation functions uh, will uh, will uh, be factorized in this way and uh, again the external part is just will provide just some normalization factors while the internal object the, sorry the internal correlation function is the object of focus in our in our discussion So, um, mm, right, good. So, um, so ah, this is the, the first uh, of the, uh, the, the top set of uh, interaction vertices that have uh, discussed before in the EFT uh, have the property that all contain a graviton. And so, as I said, the graviton state in terms of the internal CFT is um, trivial, it's essentially the identity. So what that means is that uh, the internal corre CFT correlators of, of that kind will just reduce to two-point functions. So essentially, they, again, they just provide some normalization constants that, that we're not really concerned about. Um, so the interesting terms are the bottom two that are genuine three-point functions in, even in the internal CFT. Now one mediates uh, the, the gauge interaction, one is the, the interaction with the moduli. Uh, but so again, because the top one depends on conserved current, uh, it turns out that is also some universal uh, term that uh, one can compute. But our focus is precisely 
the bottom term. This is just to say that the bottom term, interaction term, is the only one that we need to, to compute. So how do we do this? We have to set up uh, the, the states that we have described that we are interested in in the EFT in terms of this worksheet description. So we write them as, uh, as these vertex operators that overall are uh, one one conformal primaries. And so by, by just asking this and, uh, and uh, requiring the simplest form of these objects, we, we can write them in this form. Now the graviton was already introduced and then the charge states, for instance, have changed by the internal factor because these are related by the spectral flow argument. Uh, but this is the, the general structure. So now um, the, the internal states of the, of the CFT have a, of this correspondence. So we, ha we have to write the corresponding operators and their, um, their scaling dimensions. Uh, now uh, we should note that there are two um, operators of weight one one. The first one is a product of the gauge currents and the next one is the, the object that we want to consider as the modulus uh, operator. So what we need to uh, uh, check or we need to ask is that we only uh, look at the, or, uh, the, uh, the 011 operators and the operators corresponding to moduli that are orthogonal to the gauge part. Um, so the, these are the, 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 the objects that we will, uh, we will um, put in our correlation functions, right? So, uh, so again, then the, uh, the, the, now the, the EFT interaction vertex is this, uh, this three point function in the internal CFT. Uh, and now recall in, in a general setup where we have conserved currents, one can use the Sugawara decomposition to, uh, to essentially factorize the Virasova algebra in this form. Uh, it's very schematically what what happens, uh, and then because uh, phi or well the corresponding operator O11 is a neutral current primary, then that essentially means that the current part of the algebra is completely transparent to it. So uh, the full Virasoro is equivalent to the L hat uh, Virasoro active on it. This is crucial in uh, in, uh, in the next steps. Um, so uh, additionally, the, the, the point is that the, the one Q states, these uh, charge states are, uh, uh, because they're related to the gravity of the spectral flow argument, the, the, their weights are, are, are restricted in some sense. So, so the, essentially this, the intuition is that these only talk to the current part of the algebra, while as I said, the O11 operator only talk to the, to the orthogonal part. So the intuition is that even if we have this three-point function, it effectively factorizes it in a two-point function that just uh, cares about the current part, or just proportional to the current part of the algebra, and then a one-point function. So then if this is the case, this would, uh, would vanish. But can we actually compute this uh, more uh, precisely? Can, what can we say about it? So, so we, we can use the algebra uh, and uh, act with the with um, the Virasoro modes on the O11 operator to essentially extract the eigenvalue. Or turning this around, we put into the correlator uh, the L and then the L hat operators. That that's equivalent acting on O. So that essentially tells us that the correlation function is proportional to L hat zero acting on the one Q states. But now recall the properties of the of the of this charge state, you say the scaling dimension and the charge are essentially uh, the same, or they are strongly correlated at least, right? Uh, actually, the same. But so then you'd say, okay, then L hat zero is just the difference between these two. So what do we get? Zero? Are we done? Well, right. So there's a I, I skipped something here, some subtle step now. Uh, in the correlation function, O was computed at Z. Um, so actually what is the eigenvalue is L0 at Z. Or, and then that, that reduces to L hat 0 at Z. The current part doesn't matter because still the O11 is 
transparent to the current part, but it does matter for the hot operators. But luckily what we know that uh, the full verator modes or the current modes are written as contour integrals, so we actually can compute this, we can translate these. Uh, and so what happens is, or the, the summary of this, is that we need in some sense that the Sugawara decomposition in terms of the current and the hat part of the algebra is uh, kind of commutes with this, uh, this shift. So uh, uh, th this uh, actually is what we compute. Now we have an, an expression for L hat zero at a generic position. And so it turns out that, uh, that then the correlation function uh, is, um, it's a combination of L hat zero, L hat minus one. Turns out that that's also zero. Both terms are actually zero. So then this is just saying, okay, this is zero. This, uh, so the, the O11 doesn't mediate any interaction with, between the charge states. So this is the result, but this is, of course, I only uh, introduced this from boson extreme theory, and you may as well not believe it. Um, so let me try to generalize and be a little more uh, uh, systematic here. I'll, I'll, I'll skim over the, some details, but I'll, I'll just mention the key differences. So these the, are the key points that, uh, uh, that uh, distinguish a super string theory, right? Um, so we have super conformal primaries now. The, we have to be wary of ghost uh, contributions to the amplitudes. And also the Sugawara uh, current decomposition is a bit more involved. So the question is, can, can we extend what I was saying before and what we seem to have found for the bosonic case in this, uh, in this scenario? Now, one is, uh, is, uh, is essentially just a matter of bookkeeping. Instead of using conformal primaries uh, as our worksheet states, we have super conformal primaries. So the, the labels uh, here, the, the scaling dimensions depend on which uh, theory you're considering. But here I just listed one case. Uh, but the, then, uh, and then the, the, there are similar arguments on asking uh, orthogonality between the O operators and the current, uh, the product of currents. Uh, right, so but this is, uh, this is straightforward. Then point number two, is uh, 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 we should, uh, okay, I said that we want to avoid ghost contributions. So in order to do this, one should work in the zero, zero picture that guarantees that, that the amplitudes one is computing are physical. Uh, so that, that means that take a super conformal primary, uh, here again, it's all for type two language, notation at least. Uh, so from a super conformal primary with a half, a half, one has to raise the, the weights uh, to get the, the corresponding state or operator in the zero, zero picture. But the problem now uh, is that we have this factorized description. So, so we have these raising fermionic modes in either sector and also the states are factorized in this form. So one may worry because in general, or at least has to keep track of a lot of states. Uh, even if you don't worry, you have to do a lot of computation. Uh, by because of the structure here, but uh, luckily it turns out that uh, well we we can simplify this because we're only computing three point functions, and uh, for three point functions, in fact, the uh, the full uh, correlator in the zero zero picture is equivalent to the same correlator where only the middle guy, so the middle the operator that we put in the middle is 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 lifted to the zero zero picture. Uh, so what this allows us to do is that we can pick the, this middle guy. Remember, we are computing the correlation functions between these charge states and uh, the modulus uh, or the operator corresponding to the modulus. So what we do is always stuck, stick in the middle the, the modulus operator. So that means that from the super conformal primary that was the O a half a half, we have these four states uh, sorry, these four operators that uh, we that can appear in the middle term there. Right. Now the third 
point is, uh, is the Sugawara decomposition in, in terms of the current. We have a, a clearly a much more complicated structure because now we have uh, two types of stress tensors, two types of currents. Uh, so this just means uh, keeping track of a whole lot of more things. All of these operators need to be computer, we need to check that the algebra stays consistent. And then the key point or the key difficulty is what is that we have to shift the all these current operators uh, and, uh, and the full operator or full modes to a uh, to a generic position. Right. So um, right. So so then uh, with all of this, can we still run the bosonic argument? Now, uh, the, the four color correlators that are uh, independent conformal sectors essentially are is listed on the bottom, right? As I said, the one few states don't need to be changed. The uh, all, uh, half a half gets lifted in, uh, in the various pictures or in the various sets. But the key point for the bosonic case was that the, the set of charge states and the, the moduli uh, operators were essentially in different conformal sectors. One only talked uh, to, the, to the current part of the algebra, one only talked to the orthogonal part. So this says that we can run the same argument for each of these. So here I put OXY because you can just run it for each different X and Y. Uh, you act with the various modes as before, and then what you find is the same result. That essentially, this three-point function effectively factorizes. Now, of course, this requires checking that uh, you know the Sugawara decomposition and all these shifts in the in the coordinates make sense. As it wasn't uh, very very pleasant to do, but that's uh, there it is. And so, finally, the result after all of this, uh, this uh, work is that this three-point function uh, uh, vanishes. So, so essentially, that this is saying that the 1q states are not charged under the, um, this modulus, uh, or the, the o, a half a half and its descendants right, on the, the, by the action of the g. So equivalently, this is saying that this uh, uh, that there is no scalar charge contribution. So the third term in the in the uh, repulsive force conjecture is actually zero for the states. So uh, what what uh, here? This is the actual summary. What have we actually shown? Right? Uh, there are these one q states that are related by spectral flow to the graviton. So these are uh, uh, this is why these are the I mean all of this works because these are special and are of this kind. And now. Uh, the point is that one needs to compute in one example, or that equivalently at one point in moduli space, uh, uh, with the self force of these particles. And it turns out that it has been computed to be, to, they have been computed to have zero self force, in some examples at least. And then the, the, what we've done here is this point three, is to show that actually uh, the, this, this statement doesn't change as you move across moduli space. So, so the moduli and these charge states don't talk to each other, essentially. And so combining two and three with the, with the argument uh, uh, on this uh, kind of bogom only bound that uh, Ben will be publishing soon. <laughs> uh, then two plus three equals four. And so this is saying that we found, we all, in a generic, string theory at three level we found that these states are super extreme so this is the key point of course there are caveats in all of the, in the assumptions that we use but this is the result we do have uh, super extremal states at three level so i think this is it great Matteo. thanks for the very nice talk um well, that was, uh, well, was very on time um are there, oh, looks like Miguel has a question. Yeah. How's it going? Good, good. Thanks a lot for a very nice, uh, yeah. very nice talk. So I, mean, I just had a, uh, I mean, I just had a, like a general question about loop effects, right? Like this, this is all in stream perturbation theory, right? This is all at three level. So exactly, yeah, sorry, exactly, exactly. That's, that's the question. So that's three level stream perturbation theory. So do, is there, but, but you also have all these, these, these nice structure theorems in the CFT. Is it possible to somehow 
do you envision that it would be possible to say something with higher loops at some point? I certainly hope so. That's one of the new you know, future directions, mm -hmm. as we say. But we need a higher loop modular invariance arguments to then use in, to, in the spectrum of the of the of the like one uh, lower uh, loop order uh, to say to say which states are in the spectrum. Right? But, so, but, but we, we have those, right? We have modular, right? I thought it was like these old papers that said that modular invariance um, it was like just about, so you had one extra constraint at genus two or, and then that's all there is? Or? Well, if that's the case, then, uh, then I think we could say, we can certainly say something more. I should look into it and see, see if actually we can apply all of that. Okay, that would be super cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Lawrence? Hey, uh, thanks for the talk. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. um, so the states that you found that are, so you call them super extreme, but they have vanishing cell force. So these would kind of saturate uh, the RFC. Yeah, right, sorry, there, there's some kind of uh, language uh, because even sorry, uh, in the repulsive force paper from two years ago, yeah. self-repulsive includes zero cell mm -hmm. force as, as yeah. just nation wise. Yeah, so I was wondering, so you, because you found these states by doing like uh, spectral flow in the graviton. Yeah. But in principle, uh, you could also take like a different state uh, with chart, for example, that is already super extreme and uh, apply spectral flow to that. Sure. So would you then expect to find something different? Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't, I don't. I don't think so. It's just that that so presumably we'd find similar arguments, but this is much more powerful, right? Because we know exactly the ra the, the the connection between the scaling dimensions or the mass and uh, and the charge of the states. Uh, that doesn't it, 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 there there's some shifts, right? If you have a super extremal particle or something that's not related to the graviton. Yeah, exactly. So uh, like the example that I had in mind, if you take like the heterotic string. You have this particle that is super extremal. Mm -hmm. I think if you apply spectral flow to that, then you always you would generate a tower that remains super extremal, and then only asymptotically, yeah, uh, right, right. Uh, becomes equal to the BPS. Right, but but yeah, I, yeah, right, good. But but the point is that here we, what we actually compute is the force, right? Uh, so yeah, so sure. Yeah. So 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 maybe I don't know. I mean, I should maybe maybe we could say something similar. Mm -hmm. But to compute the force, we actually need the, this essentially this factorization of the algebra. It's obvious, well, mm -hmm. kind of, no, in retrospect, is obvious yeah, sure. for the <laughs> graviton stage. But but yeah, certainly it's uh, it's cool. If, I mean, if we can say like a bunch of more things in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Yinan. Uh, hi. Yeah, so I just have a question. So I think. Your talk, you're both, you're mainly using a general argument of the worksheet CFT. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if you just consider like um, some detailed club ER or total compactification to lower dimensions. Then what could you say about the big graphic conjecture in this specific example? No, I don't, as, as, as you were saying, this is completely general, right? So we didn't look at any specifics. Of uh, of uh, say compactification or etc. But it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't really uh, I, I don't think it should really change the the um, the general structure of these results, right? Because I mean, we have the algebra, and that that's the key point uh, that the algebra tells us that uh, because these states are special and the moduli are special, so then they cannot talk to each other. So. Uh, Certainly, we should uh, probably ask the question, like uh, what what happens in specific uh, instances. But but I think it will hold. Uh, okay, so the number of supersymmetry also doesn't matter. Right? That's correct. After you it from. There's just uh, yeah 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 that's right. We just have worksheet yeah. the supersymmetry, right? But, but that that complicates things. But in the end, we see we, well we showed that the results don't change. So, so you take the bosonic result, and then that 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 works. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, given that Ben probably has a comment about Lars's question, let's take uh, Ben's comment first. Sure. Uh, yeah, thanks, Matteo, for nice talk. Um, 
Yeah, I was just going to say about uh, Lars's question. By establishing that, well, and Matteo didn't say this, but you can actually refine the result that these graviton states are super extremal to that they're exactly extremal. And so that fixes the extremality bound. And then if you're doing what you wanted to do with, uh, say, starting with a tachyon and getting these things that are, are lighter, then that means they're strictly super extreme. Just like in the, in the uh, heterotic string on a torus case. Yeah, thanks for the clarification. Okay. And uh, for one last question, let's have Arena. Hey, hello. Thank you for the talk, Mateo. It was mm -hmm. nice. So, yeah, I just wanted to ask whether you can say something more about the, the charge and mass of the state in comparison to the other ones, like whether it's light or whether the charge is small or whether the charge to mass ratio is the largest one that you could have in that direction or something like that. Um. No, I mean, hmm. Hmm. I, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I can go back, but, but I think this is, this would hold, I mean, I co I, well, the, 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 let's see, let me say the, the steps that we have followed work in general, right? Because any state that is, uh, you can obtain by spectral flow from the graviton, right? So uh, whatever the charge is, doesn't matter. As long as it's connected by spectral flow to the graviton, then it would satisfy this thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Good. So, so it doesn't really matter what. Um, charge. I mean, you but may I have some. Sorry. Go ahead. Not every state can be obtained this way, right? Or. I think that yeah, that, I think that's correct. But how uh, in comparison to the ones that cannot be obtained this way, I don't know. Is oh, there, oh I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, you can I don't find know. something stronger, no? And whether I don't know, it's the the one that is, has the largest charge to mass ratio is the one that yeah. Is well, 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 it turns out that these are always uh, extremal, right? So uh, you, you kind of have uh, have that that bound, but I don't know in general if. Uh, if you had different states, what uh, I mean, where you place them, right, along this uh, this ladder of Q over N, uh, I, I'm not sure, but uh, but I'm just saying that presumably you can find such a state, one of these states uh, 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 that satisfies our derivation, at, like at many places, right, because it's just you just change M, that will change, uh, sorry, change Q, that will change M. Uh, but the, the, again, the ratio is, stays the same, right? It's always the extreme of, uh, because in the end, these are alpha prime over four uh, n square equals one half q square and, well, on one side. Then, then uh, of course, these are, I mean, I didn't talk about level matching much at all, at all. but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm not ex entirely, entirely sure, but, uh, but I think you could always find these states, but a, a special thing is that the ratio is kind of, it's kind of always constrained. Okay. All right, let's have one final uh, re-comment from Ben. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say in response to what Irena was asking, uh, from what I was just talking about with Lars, right, sometimes it's not the lightest state. That's for sure. If right, it's PPS, right. then of course it is. But yeah, it, it's not that you can show that it's the lightest state, because sometimes it isn't. I mean, yeah, in general, we don't know, right? I mean, it could be... All right, well, uh, let's thank both of our speakers for their very nice